Ethereum investors are worried. The Ethereum merge, which essentially moves Ethereum from proof of work over to proof of stake, is coming soon. Right now it is tentatively scheduled, fingers crossed, for August. But with the market so weak, I would expect that any delays are not going to go over very well for the price of Ethereum. So in today's video, I want to break down the coming merge for Ethereum. I want to discuss just where we are at in that process right now and what we can expect from the Ethereum merge as we move closer to this major, major tech upgrade for Ethereum. My name's Lark. I make videos talking about cryptocurrency investing. If you do like that topic, then please subscribe to the channel. Leave a little tap on the thumbs up button for me to do let me know that you appreciate this kind of content. By the way, every single week my team and I produce Wealth Mastery. This is a cryptocurrency investor report coming twice weekly to your inbox. We are helping you find the opportunities to keep making money even in this current bear market that cryptocurrency finds itself in. You can actually sign up to Wealth Mastery for free using the link down below in the description. Okay, let's dive into this topic. So the big news about Ethereum right now is that it has officially gone live with the merge from proof of work to proof of stake on the Ropsten testnet. This is one of the most important Ethereum testnets and one of the last testnets before the actual launch of the merge to the main net, currently, again, penciled in for August. Now, assuming that everything goes to plan on the Robston test net, then we will see that happening in just two months time. But this is one of the worrying things that's on investors' minds right now. We need the test to go well. If there's any problems in the testing phase, there will be delay. Any delays right now, probably going to result in a lot of pessimism and let down for investors right in the middle of a bear market when you don't really want that to be happening. So very much less than ideal situation, which could be bad for the price if we do see that happen. Now more than ever, we need some good, strong narratives to form up for crypto and an upgraded Ethereum, a technologically advancing Ethereum might be just such a spark in an otherwise sad market. Fingers crossed, of course, that everything does go to plan, that there are no further delays. We know a lot of delays can happen with Ethereum, but let's hope there are no more. Now, what does the merge actually mean in practical terms for investors? What does this upgrade do to Ethereum? Well, first, of course, it means the end of proof of work and its heavy energy consumption. Now, this chart right here gives you a really good visual comparison of just how energy intensive Ethereum is. So you can see uh, Bitcoin here using proof of work, of course. We can see Ethereum's proof of work, which is currently on, and how much energy proof of stake Ethereum is going to be using. Pretty shocking numbers here. It also means the end of the miners. Now, this is going to dramatically change the economics and really the sell pressure on Ethereum. See, here's the situation right now. Ethereum is in what I like to refer to as a mine and dump economy. This means that every single day, there is constant sell pressure from the miners who run cash-based businesses. Right now, Ethereum on average is making around $10 million a day in fees. That goes to miners, not stakers as it will in the future. And look, yeah, of course, stakers can sell but the incentives to do so is much less. Why would you sell when you can take your stake your awards, restake them and earn even more? The fundamentally the dynamics of the economics are changing here. Then we bring in the triple halving. This is a big part of the Ethereum merge as well. This will reduce the block reward from around 13,000 ETH a day now to down to around 1300 ETH per day, a 90% reduction. This is the triple halving. This, reduces Ethereum sell pressure by another $20 million a day from the miners. Right now, all that's going to the miners. Miners are making $30 million a day right now. Again, we have to assume, of course, that stakers are going to restake. But even if they didn't, it will only create a $2 million a day versus a $20 million a day potential sell pressure because of the triple halving. What we're talking about for Ethereum is fundamentally a dramatic change to the Ethereum economy. It's no longer mine and dump, now it's stake and restake and hodl. And I know what you're thinking, but, 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 Lark, 
Surely if all these people who have been staking their Ethereum get a hold of their Ethereum when the merge happens, they're gonna destroy the market. They're gonna dump, 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 dump. Well, when they get their Ethereum in the future, maybe they will, maybe they won't. But the key thing to realize is that the staking rewards are not unlocking at the merge. This is good, considering the weak state of the market and don't expect a massive market turnaround in the next two months. But all of those block rewards, all of those network fees that we were just talking about, plus the millions of locked Ethereum, there's like 10 million locked Ethereum right now that's been staking for over a year, none of that is getting released in August. Zero. That will come at a later to be decided date. So that's a good thing. Let's just hope that when it does happen, it happens during a stronger time in the market. So you don't need to worry about all that ETH being unlocked, at least not now anyway, right? So if that's something worrying you as an Ethereum investor, just put that aside, that's not happening at the merge. Also quick side note, the triple halving when implemented and combined with Ethereum's existing burn mechanisms, and of course, based on the current burn rates, would actually decrease the supply of Ethereum by 1.4% a year, which may not sound like a huge number. We're talking about like a million and a half Ethereum a year. Whew, gone. Ethereum is now entering into its ultra sound money period. Now there is one thing that I do want to be clear about that is not going to be helped, not going to be fixed by the merge. It's one of the biggest problems in Ethereum right now. And that's Ethereum's out freaking rageous fees, man. Don't expect fees to go lower anytime soon for Ethereum because they're not going to do it. Which returns us to a key worry for Ethereum investors. Is all of this happening just a little too late and a little too slow to keep pace with the very hungry competitors in this industry? Well, as you can see here, Ethereum has slowly but surely been losing its DeFi market share in terms of total value locked to other blockchains for well over a year now. Before the whole Terra Luna collapse, it was down to 55%, bumped up a bit recently, but still, chains like Avalanche, Solana, Polygon, others, they have presented a pretty simple and clear value proposition to new users or just to jaded old users, come and do cool shit on our blockchains and pay pennies to do it, not hundreds of dollars per transaction and fees. Yes, I know we have Ethereum layer twos like Arbitrum and Optimism. I've used both of them. They're fine. And they do go a long way towards fixing these growing pains. But still, you cannot argue with the facts. Right now we see Ethereum doing a little over a million transactions a day with high fees. And those fees are cheap right now because non-object activity, but still high fees. But look at Polygon doing over three times transactions per day of Ethereum for pennies. Solana doing almost 15 times as many transactions daily compared to Ethereum, again, for pennies. Until Ethereum increases its scalability via sharding, hopefully that's gonna happen in 2023, fingers crossed, I expect that users will continue their migration to other blockchains. People go where the fees are low, where it's cheap to use it. Does that mean it's all over for Ethereum? No, 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 far from it, far from it. But it does mean the stakes are high. In fact, they're higher than ever when it comes to actually pulling off these upgrades. We can't even begin to talk about the network sharding that will be the thing to actually increase the scalability and bring the fees down on Ethereum until the frickin' merge happens, man. And that better damn well happen in August. We're at least two months away from it if everything goes to plan. Again, fingers crossed. Done that a few times in this video. Assuming everything goes to plan with the test nets, then we will see that happening in August. Also, check out this quick chart here for a bit of hopium before we end up this video. This shows the supply distribution of Ethereum. 10% right now locked in Ethereum 2.0, 34% being used in DeFi, and only 20% of the total supply of Ethereum is currently sitting for sale on exchanges. The important point to note here is that the supply of Ethereum on exchanges has been steadily falling for two years now, showing a strong long-term belief in the future of Ethereum by investors right across the market. That 10% locked in the Ethereum 2.0 staking contract also underlines this reality because those people are locked in for a potentially long ride. Final thoughts for you on today's video. Fundamentally, 
The merge is a huge economic shift for the second biggest cryptocurrency. When it happens, this will be a net positive for not just Ethereum, but also for the tens of billions of dollars worth of tokens living on top of Ethereum right now. But in spite of the positive economic shift, and of course the deflationary switch, very bullish on both those things, we should not expect Ethereum to moon overnight once the merge happens. Just as we see with Bitcoin halvings, these technological upgrades, they take time to come to fruition. Their impact takes time to affect the market. I hold Ethereum, I have held Ethereum for a long time, and I'll continue to hold my Ethereum. I think we're on the verge of something truly revolutionary here for Ethereum. And I remain both optimistic and excited about the future of Ethereum. Your question for today, do you think that Ethereum is finally going to move to proof of stake in August? Or is it going to be delayed again? Let me know down below in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching today's video and peace out till next time.